Hello there. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you. This is a video in a series of videos showing you how to make a custom character controller that uses rigid body physics, sim machine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity. In the last video we implemented rotation of the player's rigid body and the ability to pitch the camera up and down. And today we're going to try to make this a video that's actually short by just setting up a sim machine third person camera. Alright, so let's get started. In our project here, we're going to go up to the window tab. Can go down to Package Manager. In Package Manager, make sure you're under Packages, Uni Registry. We're going to scroll down. And we're going to find Cinemachine. And we're going to click Install. After that's done doing this thing, we can close the Package Manager window. And next, in the Hierarchy panel, we're going to right click, Create Empty. And I'm just going to call it Cameras. We're going to Drop down player, humanoid red, player again, camera follow, and we're going to grab the main camera, and we're going to put it under the camera's game object we just created. Now in our top bar up here, we have a cinema machine drop down. We can click that. Create virtual camera, click that. I'm just going to rename this to something like third person vert cam. And we're going to take this, and we're also going to drag this underneath cameras. Okay, now with the third person vert cam selected, in the inspector panel, you'll see a cinema machine virtual camera. We're going to go ahead and set this up. Uh, for priority, you make this some um, large number. I'm just going to do something ridiculous and make it that. For the file and the look at, we're going to grab our camera follow, and we're going to put it in both of those fields. Lens and transitions, we can just leave alone for now. Under body, drop down, we're going to do framing transposer. We're going to set all of our damping to zero. And we're going to uncheck target movement only. For the screen Y, we're going to change that to 0 0.725. Camera distance can be left as is for now. And we're going to check unlimited soft zone. For the aim, we're going to drop that down and choose same as follow target. And for damping, we'll put 0 0.1. While we're here, we'll go ahead and add a collider for our camera. So under extensions down here, there's add extension. Click the drop down, and we're going to choose Cinema Machine Collider. We're going to change the camera radius to 0 0.2. And for strategy, we're going to choose pull camera forward. We're going to change the smoothing time to 0 0.1 the damping to 0 0.5 and damping when included to 0 0.25. Next in our hierarchy window we're going to go to objects, random, we're going to drop that down, we're going to select all of our cubes by clicking and holding shift, you select the first one first, press shift, click the last one, that will select them all. Under layer, we're going to drop that down, we're going to click add layer, and we're just going to add a layer, call it movable. And back up in the inspector, we need to make sure that our cubes, we set the actual layer to movable. Now that we created it, we need to make sure we set it. Now back to our camera in the inspector. We go back down to our Cinema Machine Collider. Under Transparent Layers, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check movable. We'll also need to make sure that under Collide Against, we select everything. Collide Against is just the objects that the collider will actually collide against. A transparent layer is just what it sounds like. It's a layer that's going to be transparent, but physically takes up space. So the camera can exist behind it, but it cannot take up the same space as the object. Which will work well for these cubes that we're moving around. And now if we go ahead and do a play test. I'll go ahead and maximize this. I'm using a gamepad. There's still one more thing we need to do to fix a problem. See when we're going in circles, you can see there's a little bit of a jitter. If you look at the actual cubes, you'll see a jitter. And it's a lot more apparent the faster your actual player is moving. So if I actually unmaximize this, and I click on my player, red, 
and I increase the number to say 150. So I'll move five times faster. Let's go ahead and maximize this again. And we start moving around. You see that terrible jitter? So the way to fix that, let's unmaximize. Stop the game. If we go to cameras, main camera, you'll see that there's now a component called Cinema Machine Brain. That happened when we created our third person vert cam. It automatically did that. It put this component here on the main camera because we're still actually using the main camera. And in the options, we need to change the update method since we're using physics to move our character and that's when the character is moving and that's when objects will be moving. We need to make sure that we change the update method to fixed update. And while we're here, we'll also change the blend update method to fixed update as well. Okay, now that change, I actually noticed that the uh, dead zone on my controller is not large enough. So it's actually causing me to drift. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Edit tab here. Go to Project Settings. Going to go to Input System Package. And we're going to create Settings Asset. You can see what that is. That created this here. And we're going to change this default dead zone min to, let's try 0.175 for now. And go ahead and close that. I'm going to drag this Input System Input Settings into the Input folder. Doing so doesn't matter, it does not affect the actual settings, it still keeps track of them. So if we go to edit, project settings again, you'll see it's still 0 0.175 just like we set it. Close out of this again. Alright, in the hierarchy panel we're going to select our player again. Go ahead and click red. We have the player selected. In the inspector panel we're going to scroll down to our humanoid land controller script. We're going to change our movement speed. Our 20, a little bit slower than what we did last time, that was a little fast. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a play test. I'm going to grab my gamepad. The dead zone seems a lot better now. You see we move pretty good. And you'll see the jitteriness is gone. There's still a lot more we can do to control this jitter because there's still just a touch of it. It's not quite perfectly smooth. But we'll go over that in another video. We're going to do a pretty deep dive on how the frames are rendered and the difference between fixed update and update. But for now, that's pretty good. You'll also notice that if I pan up, we can't go through the floor anymore. So that camera collider is doing its thing. If I go up, I can't pitch any further than that. So our pitch limit is working. Same thing with looking up. I can't pitch any further than that. Well, still got some drift in the gamepad. So I'm actually going to stop the game. Edit, Project Settings, Input System Package. We're going to up this to 0 0.25. Go ahead and close that. Also, if you remember, our cubes, we gave them a layer. We put them on the movable layer. And then on our virtual camera, if we click that, look in the inspector, you'll remember that under the Cinema Machine Collider, we set transparent layers. We checked movable. You see movable is checked. It's the only layer that's checked. I'll show you what exactly that means now. Go ahead and play the game. So we'll just run around here and knock some cubes over. And you can see, we can see behind the cube, but it will not take up the same space as the cube. It'll just move to the other side of the cube completely. It'll still clip through it, but it won't take up the same space. I hope that makes sense. So that just works a lot, lot better. I'm going to grab my gamepad. Go in a quick circle here. Everything seems to be playing very smoothly. This looks good. And so that's pretty much it for this video. That's all we're going to be doing today. In the next video, we're going to set up two more virtual cameras. One's going to be a third person orbit and the other a first person camera. I'll show you how to configure both of those. And I'll also show you how to change the cameras while playing the game. If you're feeling generous, leave a comment down below. I want to read what you're thinking. Let me know if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd also appreciate it very much if you liked the video. And if you're feeling extra, extra generous, it'd blow my mind if you subscribe to the channel. Being new to this and putting these videos together takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you for any and all participation and support. I look forward to continuing this in the next one. See ya.